I got a call from Ali. Ali Abdelaziz calls me, and he was telling me that Usman will fight Jake Paul, that Usman accepts the fight with Jake Paul. Now, right away, I didn't know what he was talking about. I had to, I had to back up from that and go, Jake Paul, Usman, where did this come from? And it did come from somewhere. There was some level of social media presence. Paul had even tweeted a picture out of Usman's daughter, which would seem like that's fighting terms, without even knowing any more about the story. Do I need to finish that thought? So Ali says that Usman will fight him. Only condition is that Dana White is the promoter, not a co-promote exclusive. Dana puts it on. So I've got a couple of takeaways on this. First off, are we at this point? And if so, as good of a job as I feel Paul has done, he's done a better job. As much credit as I have given him for pulling this thing off, he has done an even better job. If we're now at the point where people think he could compete with Usman. I mean, that is a fantastic worker there. That is a fantastic job. And I don't know that any of you believe that he could compete with Usman. But the mere fact that we're having the conversation and the what ifs, and Ali laid some stuff out all the way to 190 pounds was part of it. So maybe Paul said somewhere along the way, or maybe that's what Askren weighed at, but either way, Ali made a point to that. We'll give him the size. We'll do everything he wants to do, but Dana has to put it on. And I have to add for you, Henry Cejudo, and I'm going back about two months now, but Henry was workshopping this whole, I'm going to box Floyd Mayweather. And I was reaching out to Henry and going, okay, Henry, but before I bring this to the audience, how true is this? How true is this? And where are you at with this whole, I'm going to box Floyd? And Henry's response was like, well, it's, I've taken it to Dana. I need Dana's approval. And then I'm going to go and box Floyd. But my point being, we've now got two guys that want Dana to promote them in boxing. And there's a third. I've been sitting on one. I'm sitting on a big secret over here, guys. I still can't talk about it. I can only hint to it, but it has to do with one of Dana's fighters and Oscar De La Hoya. So now we got three. And it's just very, it's very interesting that this time, was it two summers ago, Dana was going to start a boxing organization. Zufa Boxing was going to live, was going to be real, was going to be a weekly product. They had a whole plan put together. Ended up not happening. Now we've got three guys between Usman, the unnamed person I got to sit on for De La Hoya, and Cejudo that all want to box and all want Dana to promote the show. But now Dana's, I don't think he's interested. I don't think any of these things are going to happen, but I do like the way that Usman came about it. That's why I'm bringing this to you. I respected the fact that Usman knows who his promoter is and wanted his promoter to promote him. I thought it was respectful. That was very respectful. But at the same time, I got to give Paul a pat on the back. I mean, if he's got a dialogue going right now where the sitting reigning champion of the world is willing to, to, to step aside to go and compete with him. And by the way, would Paul take that fight? Like, is Paul going after Usman? You guys probably know the answer to this. I feel like I, I woke up on third base here. I went and I looked on Twitter and there was something sent out by Paul of Usman's daughter. So I imagine if I kept going down that rabbit hole, I would have a whole and complete story that I'm just assuming that you guys probably know. But I don't know where this beef came from. And is Paul enough of a badass that he takes that match? I mean, does Paul not mind taking a beating? I would respect it if he didn't. I just saw Henry. Henry Cejudo was doing Mike Tyson's podcast. And they were talking about Paul. And Tyson said, man, this guy's great. And I'm not saying he's a great boxer. I'm saying he, meaning Paul, is great for boxing because he brings in all of these viewers. And boxing needs that. Boxing needs these shenanigans and these these antics. They need a guy that can bring in some eyeballs and then we can put our really polished and, and pure boxers on the same card, get some attention on them, but we need somebody to be looking in this direction to start with. And that's what Paul does. Somewhere within this same piece, there was three guys. There was Tyson, there was Henry, and there was another guy. One of the three of them, and I think it was the other guy, said in boxing, the problem is you can't get the tough guys to fight the tough guys. 
And that's not because the boxers aren't tough guys. And I do tie this back into would Paul go out there and fight Usman? And I think he probably would. Even knowing what the result is, I think he probably would. He's shown that he's a tough guy, but this is a mistake that boxing has made. And it starts with the leadership. And the whole reason the topic came up that you can't get the tough guys to go and fight the tough guys in boxing is because losing is so unacceptable in boxing. That's the mistake that culturally they need to change today. Not wait till tomorrow, not wait for some next guy to come along, not wait till a year from now. Right now, today, the culture of boxing has got to change to let people know that in competition, you're it's a 50% chance. Pretty good chance you're not going to win. Disclose this to the audience. Tell them up front. Start changing this fact. I don't know what Paul's record is, but I thought he lost. Didn't he lose his first fight? There's two Pauls, so I get him confused. Or he had a draw in his... I thought he lost. Didn't he lose to a rapper in his first ever match? And I only bring that to you because good for him if he did. Came back and tried again. And then he came back and tried again. But I think his overall record's like two wins and one loss, or it's two wins and one draw. My point being, in boxing, that would be terrible. This is one thing that Paul could do to leave boxing in a better state than he found it. But you could have no bigger wish if you're participating in a sport or an industry of any kind. You could have no bigger wish as a blanket statement than to leave it better than you found it. But very rare that you would. Very rare that you actually do it or you have a plan to do it or that you have the power. But it would be a, a very good thing for somebody that can bring attention to this sport that's very broken to come in and, and make sure that that's clear, that you're not going to win them all. If you're fighting the hard fight, you're not going to win them all because it's a sport of competition. And it wouldn't be a competitive sport if somebody could be undefeated. And in every other sport, that's understand. LeBron will lose 8, 9, 10, 11 times in a season. Tiger Woods will lose 8, 9, 10 in a weekend. This is what normal sports do. Tom Brady will get beat, but then come in win the Super Bowl. I mean, do you understand my point? Every spot, somebody gets beat. The great ones get beat. Basketball, they do a best of seven. You can be the world champion on a Sunday having lost on Friday. But that's real and people understand it. As a matter of fact, people even accept it. Not only do they accept it, they expect it. And within boxing, they've got to change that culturally because the tough guys will fight the tough guys. They're not scared in boxing. That isn't what the issue is. Same with every other sport. Any given Sunday, right? You play any team that steps onto the gridiron. But boxing's that same way. If they would allow it, if it would be acceptable, if it would be understood, that's the biggest mistake that boxing has ever made. And you got to look at what Paul's doing, by the way. I mean, boxing, which is my second favorite sport, I love boxing, but it is painfully boring to watch. It's a dead industry. It's main event heavy. You can't feature the whole card. But then again, you can't put three and four and five good boxing matches on a card. You'd be there all the goddamn day. 12 three-minute rounds is insane. It is not fun to watch. It's not fun to watch one time in a night. Imagine if you had to do that. If there was a main card, you had to do it five times. I bring that to you because Paul has corrected this. Paul's coming in and doing eight round fights. I think they're two minutes apiece. I know when Tyson fought Roy Jones, that was, was it six rounds, but two minutes apiece, eight rounds, but two minutes apiece was much better. So that's one thing that Paul is already doing a good job of, even if on accident, is he's shortening this painfully boring sport. Because it's not horrible to see conflict and conflict resolution, even under the Queensberry rules, under any rule set that you want to do. There's a reason that court TV works. It's not just because a judge is sitting in there in the robe and scolding somebody. You have conflict and you have conflict resolution and you have it in a short period of time. So boxing in its essence would work. It's very much like court TV for these same reasons. You have two different sides. You have an adjudication. Somebody gets their hand raised and you leave. You have a result. I bring it to you because there's so many things that Paul is doing on accident that are good for boxing. 
And I don't think that Paul is even aware how helpful it is from a viewer's standpoint that we're not out there for 12 rounds. And I'm not sure that anybody in a leadership position in boxing understands why this Paul experiment is working. They just go, oh, he, he, he's a wild guy and he's famous. Well, that's a big piece of it, but that isn't everything. It's a lot more enjoyable the round and the time limit and the system that we're doing this in, and not to mention when you do shorten your main event to eight rounds, you can now have a co-main event. You can now have a Frank Mir versus type fight on there. And I'm not sure that boxing is observing any of these things. I'm not sure that they're observing that there's a way to fix the sport that they have right now. First thing you got to do is get rid of 12 rounds. You got to. I mean, the two big boxing events that we've had in the last year weren't even boxers, right? It was the Jake Paul and Askren. And the other one was Tyson and Roy Jones. But what I'm saying also happened in those two things, right? The two biggest events that boxing has had in the last calendar year, they didn't have a 12-round fight. They didn't sit there and bore us to death where we had to go and watch that. Tell a story, have a conflict, resolve the conflict, exit stage left, bring on the next crew. 